Ladies and gentlemen, some order in here, please. We shall now have the presentation by the National Reform Party, by Mr. David Pessy, a member of the National Working Committee. Good morning, um, the panel, uh, the EC, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to speak to the views of the National Reform Party. You may have heard that we are dead, but we are not. Um, the National Reform Party, since its formation in 1999, has been active in the IPAC process. Thank you. The National Reform Party, since its formation in 1999, has been an active participant in the IPAC process. Um, we are proud of the electoral system that we have collectively put together which incidentally I recommend to the people of the United States, <clears throat> which is robust, which has all the mechanisms in place to address whatever issues, real or imagined, that any parties have with the current electoral rule. And in that we acknowledge the contributions that the MPP has made. Um, I heard that we cannot criticize, but I presume we can praise. <laughs> we like to acknowledge the contributions that the MPP has made in this fight to perfect our system. Where we have electoral, I mean, the parties having the opportunity to be represented at every level in the electoral process. From determining where people appear on the ballot to the printing of ballot papers, their dispatch distribution, every process in the electoral scheme. And we are pained to note that until the, uh, August the 28th, when the MPP unleashed a series of uh, allegations on us, they had been part of an inclusive, consensual process. They had been part of a, an inclusive, consensual process. Indeed, their lead presenter and their general secretary were part of those processes. We cannot say how come there was a break in communication between that leadership and the flag bearer and his deputy, or sorry, his vice, said that they came out with what they did. But since then, Thanks to our collective pampering, we have managed to create a national crisis out of something that may be entirely the figment of some people's imagination. And this thing does not belong to the EC. That's a statutory body, which is supposed to be neutral in this matter. It cannot be the, EC, the business of the EC to address this kind of mischief. And many people have made references to this four-year cycle, more or less, where in the run-up to elections, there's a sense of doom and panic. People take their monies out of our country. They send their wives and their children off. They stock up on water. They stock up on food. 
And if we don't address this, what I'll call the elephant in the room, we'll be back here fight of the EC. To put it on record, we believe that the electoral system we have now is robust and fully capable of addressing any problems that any parties may have, actual or imagined. But if we don't address what we see as the elephant in the room, we will permanently have this problem where on any flimsy basis, matters are raised, fears are stoked up, and everybody feels that our country is about to come to an end. And we insist that that responsibility does not lie with the EC. It lies with other political actors. Now, we believe that this um, four-year cycle, or is it ritual, has its roots in political traditions that are not born out of democracy, but have their roots in feudalism, which insists that they have the right to govern. They will not work They will put up inept and incompetent leaders and they will plague us. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may proceed. We insist. Um, I have to warn you to be careful what language you use. Mr. Chairman, I, I take your warning in good faith. But we have a duty to be blunt. Yes, you can be very blunt. We are being envi- Please don't incite. Oh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Your caution is taken. But we insist that it is time that we all took our collective heads out of the sand. Because these inventions will keep coming up so long as we don't deal with the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is very simple. What we have alluded to. It is a business of political parties to work. They must put forward platforms that attract. I'm talking about a republic. Not a monarchy or a kingdom or an empire. I'm talking about a republic where the principle is universal adult suffrage. It's a business of parties like mine and others to work, to prepare platforms that reflect the concerns of a citizenry and attract them, to put forward candidates who can articulate their platforms. Thank you very much. (laughs) To put forward candidates that can articulate their platforms and attract them. To put up candidates and agents to police the poll. And if they will not do any of these, they have no right to threaten our peace. That is our position. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Percy. 